New videos every day. Hi, I'm Radia. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist. And I'm Peter, and I'm a certified traditional naturopath. And this is Wake Up America. Today we are going to talk about the education, or shall we say the lack of education, in nutrition and complementary and alternative medicine in the top medical schools. We expect, because of generations of social conditioning, to be able to walk into that medical doctor's office see that comforting figure in the white lab coat with MD on his or her chest and be able to ask any question at all about any area of health and expect to get an authoritative answer. Well, as time has gone on, more and more evidence has become apparent that that's no longer the case. But the medical community still tries to portray that halo effect that we talked about in an earlier video that they are indeed the all-encompassing experts. Well, we in the Texas Health Freedom Coalition decided to test the truth of that statement. And we conducted a survey of the publicly available curriculum information of the nation's top 25 medical schools and the top schools in Texas as it pertains to mandatory training in the areas of complementary care and nutrition. And we found some very interesting results, didn't we, Radia? We sure did. Let me read some of this. This is mandatory nutrition and CAM. We're going to call it CAM, Complementary and Alternative uh, Medical Training, at the top U.S. medical schools, starting, of course, at the top with Harvard University. Um, in nutrition training, two hours, two semester hours. That's it. Two, two semester hours. And in CAM training, none listed. John Hopkins University, none listed in both nutrition and CAM training. University of Pennsylvania, one four week combined course in nutrition and none in CAM training. University of California in San Francisco, one combined course, one combined course in uh, nutrition and one combined course in CAM. The University of uh, Washington, at, in St. Louis, one combined course in nutrition and none listed in CAM. Duke University, none listed in nutrition, none listed in CAM. Stanford University, none listed in nutrition, none listed in CAM. Uh, Yale University, none listed in nutrition, none listed in CAM. Baylor College of Medicine, one six-week combined course in nutrition and none listed in CAM. Uh, Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. This was the kudos to them award-winning four-year program in nutrition and none listed in complementary and alternative medicine. U UCLA, one combined course uh, in nutrition, none listed. The, the list goes on, none listed, none listed, even at UT uh, in Houston, none listed in nutrition, none listed in complementary training. And I do want to mention too, when we do say, oh, and here, the, the Mayo Medical uh, School as well, none listed in nutrition, none listed in CAM training. So what I also want to talk about too, is when you say nutrition, we are not talking about, generally, we're not talking about clinical nutrition which is very, very different than uh, the nutrition that is taught in these colleges, which was basically what we're talking about is the pyramid. Um, you know, so one semester or a couple of course hours in the pyramid really does you as, as the patient little or no good. It, it really doesn't uh, use nutrition or any of these modalities in a, in a healing uh, way. Absolutely. And the implications for us as consumers of medical care is huge. And what I mean by that is that, think about it, are you going to be able to get valuable and authoritative advice on areas like homeopathy, various kinds of herbalism, other systems of medicine like traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda? 
from a medical doctor? What's the standard default answer? Oh, no, don't do those. Mm -hmm. Well, what they're not telling you is it's not don't do those because they don't have value. It's don't do those because they don't know. But they're not willing to admit it. Now, it goes even further than that, and you talked about this uh, with clinical nutrition, and you being a CCN, uh, use extensively nutritional supplements as part of your protocol for helping people to return to or maintain wellness, just like us naturopaths do. There is a long-standing institutional bias in the medical community with regards to nutritional supplementation. And you don't have to take our word for it. In 1998, two courageous medical doctors wrote an article in the Archives of Internal Medicine, which is the prestigious research arm of the Journal of the American Medical Association. And they showed that in medical textbooks, in the attitudes of the community at large, and in terms of the information that medical doctors shared with each other, there was widespread institutional bias. Let me give you an example. It used to be a, 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 an accepted fact that high doses of vitamin C, according to the medical community, caused kidney stones. And everybody pretty much accepted that as gospel. Well, these two doctors took a look at that, and they discovered that the root of that information was that some medical doctor somewhere wrote an opinion, and it was shared with other medical doctors who then shared their opinions. Was there scientific research done? No. Was there any kind of follow-up as to what the, the value of this doctor's opinion was? Do you remember when you were kids and you used to string uh, two tin cans together with a long string and you played the game telephone? That's what they were doing. They were playing the equivalent of medical telephone, passing on dubious information, actually inaccurate information from one person to another until enough people had the information in hand and it was accepted as fact. Well. You know, if they did that with a pharmaceutical drug, they have people up in hauled to court on charges, but they're more than willing to do that with nutritional supplementation. And so the point we're trying to make with all of this is that the medical education community is falling far short in educating their physicians on the crucial subjects of nutrition and complementary care. And, you know, Peter, I, I wanted to uh, mention because um, my degrees were in accredited universities and, and colleges and my undergraduate work in, in my science uh, was at the uh, Austin School of Nursing. And I did take some um, early nutrition classes by dietitians at that um, school. And when I opened the textbook, um, this is when I was young, and I was just starting out, I opened the textbook and I swear to God, the first, um, the first chapter in this book was entitled, What is a Quack? <laughs> and basically it went through, talk about medical bias. It went through the list. You know, anyone who uses dietary supplements uh, is a quack. Anybody who believes in organic is a quack. And it went on. The list was just appalling. I mean, I threw the book across the room and said, wait a minute, I'm not going to spend my time and money in this kind of education. But nevertheless, I did. And I did go through standard medical nutrition education, along with having to seek, which was a big challenge, to seek and um, find uh, accredited uh, clinical nutrition and complementary and alternative medicine. It's not easy to find in this country anymore. And I did write an article um, several years ago that was published in, um, it, I'm, I'm a columnist for Whole Health Magazine. This was published and it was, it was entitled United We Stand, Divided We Fall, the conflict between medicine and nutrition in, in our world. And it was stimulated by typically, um, I had a client who came in who was going through um, cancer therapy at, with her doctor. And she wanted an adjunct or a complement, uh, a nutritional protocol to go along with her, with her uh, complementary um, uh, cancer treatment. 
And so I went through um, what I was going to do with this person and everything. And she said, okay, that's fine. Great. I just have to run this by my doctor. <laughs> Famous last words. And I said, okay, well, before you do, I want you to take everything that I'm doing. And I handed her literally the citations and the references for everything I was going to give this person and everything I was going to do. Two days later, I get a call back from her and she's canceled her appointment. So I called her. What a surprise. I called her and said, uh, so... Um, why did you cancel your appointment? She says, well, my, my doctor says that that's just a bunch of hocus pocus and a, and a waste of money. And I said, really? And you came to me and was very excited about this program. Why do you suddenly have this change of mind? She says, well, he, he, he's my doctor. He knows. And I said, well, you go back to your doctor and you ask him how much in his training, how much nutrition and how much clinical nutrition has he had in his education? I'd really like to know because I've had almost eight years. Okay, I've had about the equivalent in medical school and plus I've been practicing for 20 years that that doctor has had in, in medical school, I have had in clinical nutrition. And I showed him all the citations and everything. And, and honestly, here's what I said to this person. I said, I really wish your doctor would stop practicing nutrition without a license. <laughs> There you go. And and we I'm sure you can see the connection here to what's really going on in our healthcare system when this extraordinarily important component complementary care and nutrition is ignored. You really run the risk of making a bad situation worse without being able to get reliable information about this, these two very important subjects. And we're going to be talking more about this and equally important, what we can all do about it. Coming up, we are going to be talking about um, medicine and the medical paradigm. So um, I want you to make sure that you sign in if you haven't already signed in. We look forward to your comments. We really want to hear from you. We want your feedback. We want to be able to address some of your concerns in your health care. And if we can um, have any discussions about confusion that you've heard on the media or confusion that you've heard in mainstream medicine that we may be able to clear up or have a discussion about, we'd love to talk to you about it. So please make your comments when you get off of this video, and we look forward to seeing you again. See you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.